All right, so today we're at Fitzner Performance Gearboxes. We're gonna do a bit of a shop tour, talk to Tom, check out how these DL800 gear sets are going, and Give show you. you guys a bit of a, a walk around. <laughs> like, were you talking over me? <laughs> Did you hear him talk over me? I'm gonna give you a bit of a history on why PPG are so good at what they do. So, the whole part part's not part of it. Yeah. Well, we've got the option for it. Tom, how are you? Nice to see you again. Long time to see. Yes. Hi. Tom, how are you? Hey, good. Yourself? Yeah, welcome down. Do we do a bit of a tour in here? Just yeah, show you a little bit of cool the Yeah, all cool stuff. So, tosses into his old engineering stuff, you yep. know, as a lot of us kind of for their internas are. So, Start off with his pride and joy. This is his standard Triple S he bought when he was on his P's. Yeah. And has had it since. So is the boss usually, is he hanging around still or is he? he yeah, he's still here. He, he's yeah. done the smart thing though. He, he, ah, yeah. He's not here today. No, he, he, he normally under... rolls in after lunch. So he, he, he's got it set. No, no, but he's still involved with yeah, everything. Okay. And, um, yeah, still makes, yeah, probably his name's tied to it all still. So yeah, yeah, yeah. likes to make sure everything's going well. But a lot of us here have actually been here a long time. So yeah. I've been here 15 years. Yep. Mark, like probably 21, and then a lot of guys at the back are sort of 17, 18 yeah, years. Yeah. So, yeah. so how long has he been making years for? 22? 22 years. Yeah, so and Mark's basically been since day one. Forever. Yeah. yeah. And the name Fitzner, was that from 22 years ago or is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's yeah. been Fitzner Performance Gearbox the whole time. Yeah. And uh, that's obviously yeah, his last name. Like his dad had a, his own engineering business. Yeah. They did all gear cutting and race car stuff there and yeah, he started, got the bug yeah. in Datsuns. Yeah. Slowly but surely, you know, made one for himself, which then turned into making one for a mate, a couple more mates. Hey, can we try when, this out? Is that when like 1600s were like rally, rally into rally? Oh, yeah, that was when they were the thing to have. Yeah. That's the 1000s, the yeah. 180Bs, you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, Triple S was the thing to have, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. 120Ys weren't mocked. Yeah. 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 So he had all that kind of stuff. He loves his old, like, you know, he loves his carbies. He yeah. loves his cool old stuff. school stuff. Yeah. Is this so. the lay the boys using? They're in trouble. Yeah, this is the naughty lay. So yeah. this is, yeah. <laughs> When, when they make up too many shitties at the back, yeah. they come up on here to relearn. Check this lady up. So that's where the naughty boys go. Yeah, foot we'll pedal. And they got the pedal. Even Aaron can't use it. I can't it. even use it. Give it a spin. Lift, It'll take, up. lift your foot, spin it, and then get oh, it. Yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. And he said, there we go, there we go. No, I'm going to use the manual one. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a fitter and Brutus. <laughs> Did you get that one? No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, now I can now I can see what's going on. Yeah, it's uh, right. yeah. The crank shop. It's very well. We learned how to turn them. <laughs> I had to learn how to repair, how to look how to repair them. So. Is this just some of what you do? Yeah. So this is some of the stuff we've done over the past. So it's some of the things that we have done and what we used to do at the start some of the old engineering jobs that we used to sort of do. So like an old Gilmer belt drive. We did a one-off Maserati sequential for a guy when I first started here. Yeah. That's the old shift drum for it. Wow. And the old like wow. aluminum housing for the back so of it. So 15 years ago and we're talking sequential. Yeah. That's yeah, that was like huge. And that was for some guy in Sweden. And the drum still looks how they do today. I mean, yeah. it's quite large, but. Yeah, yeah that's a big It's version. the same idea, right? Yeah, same concept. So, and essentially that's just all pinched from motorbikes. Right. Because oh, yeah, yeah. every motorbike is sequential. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so nothing exceptional. Nothing yet. new. No. Yeah. And then, yeah, so just some stuff we've done over the past. That was our original GTR sandwich plate design in the corner, that black thing. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. for the BNR, like the 32 to 34 GDR. Yeah, one of the things we used to do when I first started here was um, billet oil sump pumps. Right. So that like that blue housing in the corner, yeah. that's the old housing for the dry sump pumps we used to do. So yeah. we kind of used to do a fair bit of stuff, focus more on the gear set stuff, and now we've yeah. kind of in a position where we can sort of start looking back at those things again. Yeah. So yeah, try and start being able to offer axles again, drive shafts again. Right. All the, you know. So you did axles? Yeah, we used to do axles and drive the little sub axles and yeah, things sure. like that. But we sort of, yeah, just the way things were transitioning, we got that busy with gears. Yeah, so we had to drop a whole lot of that now that we've ex expanded. And especially the, I guess, the cost in getting the machinery to do gears. Yeah. You don't want to be doing other stuff the with other stuff. Yeah. Cheap stuff with the same machine. Yeah, yeah exactly right. And, that, and that's our strength is gears. So, yeah. yeah, stick to that. What about material changes over the years? Has that sort of been, no, nah, like the last 10, 15 years, we already know what works. Yeah, we know it works. So we haven't changed it. There's been no need to change it. Like it's an aerospace grade steel. Yeah. So it's purposely done for yeah. heat treating this style, this sort of application. So over the years, they've slightly refined yeah. it. But when we did some samples with the, the newer refinement, it didn't suit our heat treatment recipe. The heat treatment is probably more core than your material choice. Yeah. You yeah. have to make sure they match. You know, it's like um, putting the E80.
every heat treatment run, there's sacrificial parts, sacrificial biscuits. So all the material is fully traceable yes. with the supplies. And our jobs are all batched to the material. Yes. So it comes in pre-certified. So we're quite thorough on that. So if something goes wrong with heat treatment, we'll pick it up then and there and isolate it. Yeah. When we go through and you'll see every part's QA'd, every process of the way. So from first stop to second stop turning, it's QA'd. Yep. And so before it's even goes from the turning area to the next apartment, it's fully QA'd on all the turning stuff. Yeah. So the chance of something slipping through the system and making it to the end, there's yeah. either like a, a system fault or uh, there's another fault that's kind of made that happen. It's like anything, you know, things do happen from time to time. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just make but just try and take all that human error out of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. right. And if you make a mistake, make sure you don't do it twice. Yeah, yeah, but no, it's been pretty good watching it evolve yeah. and, and transition. And that's something I guess that probably wouldn't have been an issue 15 to 20 years ago because yeah. Quantity is less. Quantity is less and power levels are less. So you gotta think like, you know, even like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, oh like, yeah, 15 years ago, if you had 300 kilowatts, you were, Massive. you were the man. Like, yeah. you, no one could touch you. <laughs> yeah. Now you got 300 kilowatts, like don't even bother rocking up. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't even take a Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, those cars that come out from factory 400, you yeah. warranty. The power you can make out of little engines now, like you look yeah. at those Honda guys, Yeah. 1500 horsepower out of a two liter four cylinder. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, if you said that 10 years ago, People would ask what they're like. Yeah, 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 like, you know, they'd be like, give me some of what you're on, yeah. you know? So, yeah. <laughs> it's that massive change. I mean, obviously, yeah, just trying to keep up with those new demands and requirements yeah. that, that come with it. People make power a lot easier than yeah. before. Yeah, you know? for sure, yeah. Yeah. Especially with new engines. Yeah. And expect technology. the same reliability, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, that's, exactly right. That's they're, the hard part. Yeah, yeah, they want the full-blown race car that drives OEM. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, it has everything, so. So our relationship has predominantly been sort of R35 or the GR6 transmission. Yeah. It is, but on well, it started actually oh, Evo. Evo. Yeah. yeah, Evo, that's, yeah. yeah, so that's how I first met Aaron was Evo. Yeah. And then, yeah, so I, you were one of the first people I dealt with when I moved into yeah, sales right. off the floor. Yeah. So, how, so, how long did that go? About seven or eight years ago. Yeah, yeah, literally one of the first, because I was a lot, like, yeah. I was like, oh my God, it's Aaron with the fastest Evo. And yeah. I was like, you know, because I came from the floor as a full, like, so I was, you know, so the that first, thing. like, bit, I was like fanboying on all the people yeah. I was dealing with, because you know, yeah. you grow up. And now, there's, you know, now Aaron rings, I'm like, yeah. no, no, <laughs> no, not that bad. But no, so, yeah, we've probably yeah. developed a proper friendship yeah. over the yeah. years, yeah. so yeah. it's been good. And then, yeah, slowly support each other, work yeah. with each other, expand with each other, so. Yeah, and it made sense just when we got into the R35 platform to obviously use the PBG stuff. And then now, it obviously made sense for us to have PBG develop the DL800 yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, for the Huracan and R8. I thought the process would have taken longer, to be honest, with R&D but, development. But yeah, um, no, well, that, well that's yeah. probably, yeah, one of our strengths. And like I said before, touching on having guys here for such a long time, designing and drawing, Mark just knows what to do from the start. There's sure. no like real guesswork. There's like, I can see this is weak. I need to change this. This yeah. is too thin. Yeah. This bearing's not going to last. And from the start, we get a lot of the problems fit. And with the machines that we got, even some of them will pick stuff up out the back. They'll be like, hey, you know, you, this chamfer needs to be bigger sure. and things like that. So it's a, it's a real big team effort. All the guys know what they're doing yeah. and yeah, yeah, massive input from everyone. Yeah. And all that was proven, I guess. So the initial stage was some prototype gears for, for ratios and whatnot. Yeah. And they went in without an issue. Yeah, without an issue. Yeah, factory, to sign off, yeah, proof of concept. And, and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. And then the complete gear set went in there and it was like zero issues. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Almost expecting issues based on previous experience. Well, if if the, you remember, I was like, yeah. don't, don't make them all. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're very, I mean, if you do, and that's your confidence, but I'm, I wouldn't be saying make them all. Nah, we were the whole time like, nah, we'll just make nah, them. We'll just make them. Yeah, We've yeah. made them all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> take this one. And they literally went in and worked. Yeah. That was, yeah. Um, that was, that was awesome to experience. It's always in the back of your mind, like, oh, we could have a niggle here, but yeah. no, 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 double check, you know. Yeah. Measure twice, cut once, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, some things, yeah, funny. Do not change in life, no matter how things and modern things progress, you still got to stick to those core basics of mm -hmm. making it happen. It's a testament to the, the knowledge and everyone that's here, you know? And it's good that it's in Australia. Yeah, because these days, that's running out. So. Very much so. So even yeah. like pre-COVID and stuff, all the engineering shops locally in Adelaide were starting to just <coughs> drop off and disappear. Yeah. Um, it's not a glamorous trade amongst newer people. It's just starting to die out. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, even just with it all, trying to get people excited again. Like all the guys here are not car nuts, but they're all excited and passionate about what Machinery they do. And, and yeah, yeah, they're passionate machines, so they yeah. like, you know, we had our toolbox meeting last week and they're all like going, oh, it's cool, you know, you think 
to make 30 years, they go to 30 different people, 30 yeah. different people see my work. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and you know, like an hour apprentice is going through that at the moment. You know, he's buying, he's doing up his Sylvia. Sure. So he's just like, oh, you know, it's cool to be part of like this experience. And he's like, man, you know, everyone loves. And he's so proud of, you know, where, where, where it works. works. Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. Is, which is really cool when you start having that. 100%. And I think that's probably why we've got so much long term staff. So, 100%. Yeah. Um, and when yeah. you think of such professional companies, you think big scale, massive, nobody talks to each other, nobody, you know, yeah, that, that relationship's not there, which is well, not it's, okay. a, it's assumed. Yeah, it's yeah. assumed. That, that's the, yeah. the mental thing coming into it. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely not that. No, nah, here it's definitely like, we're all pretty good mates. No, not to say we're all living in each other's pockets, but no one here just really dislikes anyone. Anyone yeah. can walk up to anyone for a hand, hey, can you help us lift this? Yeah. Hey, can you go grab that? You know, everyone's happy to help yeah. each other. Some of the jokes that go on between the guys out the back now are pretty, <laughs> yeah. pretty good, you know, so. Oh, so um, it'd be like our, yeah. our shop then. No, yeah, 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 there's a few, there's a few on, yeah. ongoing running jokes yeah. between yeah. everyone, oh. so yeah. That stays at the lunch table. Yeah. 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 It's, it's not, not work safe. No, yeah. Yeah. no, <laughs> no, no, definitely. Definitely not, but no, it's pretty good though. Yeah. Like, yeah, to see everyone laughing and I give that positive work environment because, yeah, when you've got happy guys, you get better out better, of it. So, yeah, better results. For yeah. Sure. The other thing is, well, most people know that PPG or Fixed and Performance Gearbox yeah. um, is in Australia, yeah. Adelaide, but people assume that a lot of the machining is done overseas, mm. not just for this company, I'm no, talking no, about in yeah. general. Uh, yeah, yeah. With it's, Australia, it's, because Australia obviously costs a lot. lot. We're, you know, we're actually, because it's still the things that people don't think of, like rates, electricity, water, yeah. all the utilities. We're actually one of the most expensive countries, countries in the world for. Sure. So all things like that. So we we're proud. We still do everything in house. Yeah. Not easy to compete with when you got like other brands making their stuff offshore. Like sure. you know, yeah. Paying five bucks an hour for guys' wages. So the quality of the product. Yeah. Stands the test of time. And support. That's the biggest thing. And support. Yeah. It's all. It's a whole thing. You can't just have a good product without good support. It's everything. Like the accounting to support. You know. Where the luxury, like I sit three meters away from the design guy. Yeah. So you know, when there's a problem or an issue, I you can tell you, I can, I can be on the phone and hit him with a piece of paper and go, oh, yeah. and same. If there's a problem with the part, or someone goes, hey, you know, just an update, where's my order at? Yeah. Uh, I can literally walk out my office into the floor. Yeah. Go to the production guy, hey, where's this gear? And he'll go, it's that heat treatment, or it's in the grinding area, or it's on the dipping rack ready to be packed. Yeah. So it's awesome. We do all here in house. So yeah, it's good. It's awesome to see. And I guess we're gonna we're gonna do a bit of a walk around, show yeah. what it's like out there. It's not what you'd expect from this, you know, this office. And it's like <laughs> the thing just keeps going and going and going, and it's machine upon a machine yeah. upon machine. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a rabbit warren at the moment. Yeah. And while yeah. we're all we're in the move, and yeah. um, like I said, we don't even have everything out, out at yeah. the moment because yeah. yeah, you had to protect it and then just space as well. Oh, yeah. we'll go have a bit yeah, of a so look Yeah, so moving out the back. So basically, I think that's about the same size as what we got now. So yeah. we've got to double it and just go, yeah, longer back. Yeah. And yeah, give everyone a bit of So that's, space. I reckon that's probably like a thousand, 1,200 squares worth of machinery in the end. Yeah, probably. I don't, I don't know, maybe there's 600 squares. I, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, it's decent size. It's decent size. Yeah, yeah. And we're definitely doubling it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got all those new machines to fit in, so. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right, so should we do a bit of a so. shop walk? 100%. We'd, uh, we obviously can't zoom in on certain parts mm. because there's some exclusive stuff. stuff. Yeah, um, and now I can go through. Yeah, check it all yeah. out. Let's go cool, on, cool. so. Sun, let's catch it. Cool. Hey, Trish, uh, no, <laughs> <read it. laughs> not you. These are final drives? Yeah. yeah. So this is why well, they come back from me, treat them like this. Evo? Uh, oh, no. I reckon Evo, yeah. No, Honda. Honda. Yeah. So they come back like this from heat treatment. Yep. Uh, and then we do the final machining just so they don't buckle and distort. Right. They come back like that. So they actually paint them with a special paint to keep the middle soft. Right. So only the teeth get hardened. So yeah, then we can actually machine them easier. Gotcha. But okay. they come back. Yeah, and same thing when they'll come out of the machine, they get chance for roundness. Yep concentricity to the bolts yeah everything like that so yeah you can't get sort of any you know exactly like an oval movement in it or anything is that like electronic that. yes yeah. yeah so it's checked in the machine so a lot of the machines have like measuring probes in them now okay. so and everything gets calibrated every few months everything's yeah. checked everything's then checked again by hand so, so this is honda final drives yeah for yeah. k series yeah and that's so been hardened this is yeah. still soft so they yeah. need machine the pocket out drill the holes yeah. do yeah. a light weightness yeah yeah um, yeah, because if you did it with their original profile and heat treated it, they'll just buckle. buckle. Yeah. Because that ends up quite thin, maybe. Yeah, maybe about 10 mil wall thickness. Yeah. Yeah, and keep plenty of meat underneath the teeth and strength. There you go. Well, that's one of our shop cuts. So he was doing 
mid eights, yeah, and all na- all motor. They all motor, yeah. On yeah. nitro, but all motor. So nitro methane. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But no nitrous. No okay. nitrous. Yeah. Wow. They do a weird combo. I think that was used because yeah, they made it like a two point seven in the end. Yeah. You get right. like a K twenty four block, K twenty head. Mix and match a few things together. Nitro switch is ridiculous. It's like yeah. so they run on that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, yeah those are for a special class and yeah. stuff. So, um, America, you know, yeah, they just the Wild West, man. Just because you can, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, that's yeah, pretty cool. good. So, oh, it looks good. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, we try and keep up. What do we have over here? CNC lathe. The CNC yeah, so lathe. there's two CNC lathes here. Yeah. Is that all you've got, lathe wise? No, there's another two down there. Yep. And then this integrates, can be oh. used, well, it's a five axis machine. So yep. that's set up more like a lathe. It's got twin spindle right to it. Right. More tooling than you could probably ever need to use in it. How many tools does that hold? 74. 74 tools. Yeah. So it's Brandon. He's one of our newer guys. He's been here just over a year. Yeah, he's been running that. Um, but yeah, so that's a 74 tool holder. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, come a long, long way. But now when I, that multiplex, it originally had a robot arm, a pallet table, and I actually had another chuck that used to travel mm-hmm. across the top, so you could pick up the billet, load it in one side, yeah, right. pick it up, transfer it to the other billet, take out the finished part, re-lo- restack it. So, yeah. And a couple of times we had it running, and that overhead chuck, you'd go that fast, man. Get a crap out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you actually would like, want to stand back from the machine. To move Did you that say part. this is where you started? Yeah, so I started 15 years ago, doing all the manual machining and tickling up work. Then got moved into the lathes, then went to the mills for a bit, gear cutting, yeah. back to lathes, grinding, manual work. So, yeah, I've gone through all the... Were the, the lathe machines here, or have things been moved around? No, they've been moved around. It was originally, like, in a C-shape that way, so each machine had their jobs, like one was for gears, one was yeah. for shafts, one was for like crown wheels, the fork blanks. Do you have a wire cutter here? No, no yeah. wire cutting, so um, on the odd occasion we need to get something done, we just use a, a mob down the road. Yeah. We, yeah. Which actually, Jason, the uh, milling guy, came from there. Came from there, Came right. from there, yeah. yeah. So he came from there and his mate went to Bullet. And then we got the milling area down here further. We got some more, more Honda. So these are all, like all those. the input shafts. Cool. The Honda. Cool. Yeah. Input shafts. Yeah. yeah, the B series Honda. Wow. Just small, eh? For what you guys used to seeing from GR6 yeah. and DO800. And how much yeah. horsepower are they put each of these? Oh, like 1600 horsepower. 1600. Oh, yeah. So one of the guys, we don't up on the board, but work with the guys at Speed Factory in their car. So we got guys doing sevens and Hondas. Yeah. A- any issues when they go all wheel drive with that additional traction and weight? Not from like further down the car there is with the rear dip yeah. and drive shafts like, and stuff like shafts that. Still. Input shafts, all that holds yeah. up. So they're pretty, pretty they're tough baby, to the box. Babies, eh? Yeah, crazy. And that's why we're coming back to that heat treatment and material choice is, yeah, key because... I'm assuming that's reverse. Yeah, that's reverse, first, second. So yeah, the reverse is just, yeah, that's literally for just going back to the start yeah. line. So take it to the milling area. This is where kind of stuff starts to... Oh yeah, the GGR. <laughs> oh yeah, some old swore from... That's what I mean, like Simon and oh, wow. up. That's like the size of the chips coming off the, off the tool, so... That's cool. Yeah. Wow. So we're just getting... That's a big cut, man. Oh, how yeah. wide the cut is. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, that's when you can wear a ribbon. When you wear it as a scarf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's why, yeah, that's what we were joking before about machining stuff. Is that a finished product of those final drives? Yeah, so this is the finish of the final drives. So that will give you an idea of what they start going into. So this is a different ratio to what we saw up there, but same yeah. Honda K series. Yeah, so this is where they come through. This is where they get the final QA, the part number done, the ratio, batch number. And final final QA. So yeah, again, if anything gets picked up here, yeah. it's just scrap. Yeah, so everything gets triple checked. That's actually our um, machinist matrix. So that's full of inserts and tooling. Right. So whenever they need something for a job or to yeah. do anything, they just come here. Everything's linked to everything. So they just go, I need this insert for this tool. That's what we need. Yeah. yeah. So and then they've logged in, so we know. Who yeah. Takes, so you know who's taking the tool. What? Yeah, you got to put in what, like what job you've taken the tool for. What happens when they drive the tool in and smash it? Well, there's not really much of that these days. The new software and the new machines make it pretty hard to crash it now. Well, yeah, it's still be done, but a lot of them now have like uh, barriers that you... So you tell the machine where not to go. Yeah. So if you accidentally miss a number or hit the wrong one, it will tell you, oh, mate, you're trying to you're send me into the no-go zone. Yeah, I know that the part can't be there. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. right. This is just the laser grader. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so this is, does all the marking. The serial numbers and logos yeah. and whatnot. All that kind of stuff. And there's some in progress jobs here. So you can see there's like a soft like shaft. So yep. it's been gear cut and everything like that deep So he's just giving a final check before it goes to heat treatment. Yeah. So that's the thing. So he's, che- he's already checked this part after 
one half's been turned, second half's been turned, that year's been cut, that spline's been cut, that's been cut, that spline's been cut. And now he's checking it all again. Yeah. And then it goes off. It's got a pretty big job of checking everything. It's better we pick up something there. Yeah. And, and is there only stuff. one person that does it, or is there multiple people? Because so, you get pretty tired and complacent. Yeah, so multiple people do it, but we've got one main key guy that yeah. does it all. When he's sort of feeling a bit fatigued or something, he'll move on to something else. Something do else something else to break it up a bit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, gear sticks, I'm in progress gear sticks. So this is actually is that for a, new, a new project we've got about to come out. Shame we don't have the car here, but uh, our Honda Sequential for the K series. Right. So yeah, so this is a new stick coming for them. So again, he's just giving them a QA check before they go to anodize. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, make sure I look after the threads. Sure. They've all been cleaned up, tidied up, deburred. Yeah, and then even here now, he will QA the surface. It's not just tolerancing, it's also looks. Because yeah. obviously, you spend oh. big dollars and that's the only bit you see. That's right. So yeah. that's got to look so like... So that's terrible? Everything inside looks terrible? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly right. So make everything look good, but yeah. obviously, yeah. Um, it's unfortunate you don't see a lot of it. Yeah. Those dog teeth at the back, the dog ears. Yeah. So the dog ringers? Yeah, well these are um, so these are actually some of the weld on. With some of the parts you physically can't gear cut that on the part. Yeah. So we actually will make them in two pieces and then we shrink them together. So like interference fit. Yep. So heat up one part, cool one, drop them together. And then laser weld from the And back. then laser weld them, yeah. Yep. And then with the laser welding we can go, we want five mil depth. I think we can go up to like 30 mil depth of penetration. Depth. Yeah. Unbelievable length. Yeah, it's no mucking around. Yep. Um, this is actually, I'll be able to tell you, I reckon this is a uh, R35 or a Tremec Synchro. Tremec, yeah, right. So yeah, Tremec. So we do, yeah, the heavy duty Synchro. The so Tremec in the yeah. States is huge. So it's worth noting, if yeah. the gear diameter is larger than that, the chances are you can't, can't cut, cut that. that. Yeah, right. But if the gear diameter is smaller well, well, than that, you can cut, you can that, cut that and it can be one piece. Yeah. yeah. And we do it in a certain way. See these pockets? Some other people, when they make them, that pocket area is quite thick yep. and can break. Yep. So we do it this way, because um, one of the biggest questions we always get is why don't we do it like OEM where they're staked on? Yes. And that reason, and that's reason, by the time you put a spline on to stake it, yes. the, yeah. the, the wall thickness between the pocket and there is too thin. And then you end up cracking straight through, through there. Which we've seen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so Multiple there's a few things like that. So On other manufacturers. Yeah. 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 Some people always ask why we do things a certain way or why, why is the bat, like, what's the value behind that price? Yeah. And then that's kind of why. So it's a lot of stuff people don't see or think, but it comes back to that experience. <laughs> that's what I mean, like, going back to Mark, he just goes, I know not to do that yeah. from the start, <laughs> trust me. So you can thank some guys from 20 years ago 100%. for the stuff we do now. Have we even got a gear that shows that laser I can, I can get, I'll get one yeah. for you. Oh, I think, oh there'll be yeah, some on the DA 100. Yeah, yeah we've got DA 100. So we can so. refer back to that. So no, mm -hmm. definitely. And then there, there's a gear that's, yeah. So here's a dog engagement, we'll explain that. Yeah, give it a good idea. That's a synchro gear, so that's what everyone gets from standard. And then that's a dog engagement gear. So when you've got a synchro, the mating part is literally trying to fit in those little gaps and it's almost size to size so there's no no give. Yeah. Which Whereas is why the, your missus crunches gears. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she doesn't press the clutch button. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the dog box, the dog ring's got the same mating profile. So you've got that whole window to get it in. Essentially, when you're driving, yeah. the dog will load up one side. Oh yeah, there's a, a dog ring, so you, you kind of get that slot. That's how you change gears. So when you're driving, it's locked on one way. And then to do it no clutch, when you lift off, it will just come back a little bit. And then that's when you've got to get it to come out. If you go too early, it won't come out. And if you go too late, you'll just end up smashing the next gear. Oh, yeah. And that's why they always pop out on D-cell. Because yeah. when they go in, they'll clash the D-cell side, hit the drive side. And then when you back off, they go back that's like right. that. So hold a bit of load the on the stick. Side. Yeah, load As soon as you back off, it's going to come straight out. Straight out. Into yeah. the next gear. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is on this side. Yeah, exactly right. And you don't need a gorilla armor, no nothing, because as you can see, when you've got that window to line it up, like you've literally got that, it will just fall in. Yeah. It's not like a synchro where you've got to try and force something into like 60 little slots. That's right. Big window of play. So yes, that's definitely. where they get dangerous as well. And, so and it's worth noting, these are tapered slightly, probably can't see it in the camera, but they're tapered. And yeah, that's, the, what, that's what holds it in. Yeah. Otherwise, the, otherwise the gear will just pop out of gear. It'll just pop out of gear all the time. Yeah. And then when people damage them because they're not shifting correctly, um, they round off that edge. You lose the angle, and then it will pop out of gear. It'll throw out of gear because yeah. there's not, no leading edge. Yeah, there no, nothing to holding keep it, in. it sucked in. Yeah. yeah. So that and that the force that comes from it spitting back out will override a detent 
or you know the oh, little like spring of bolt it overrides all that again it's not want to be driven no no exactly right and um where the sequentials get good in terms of where they get their longevity from shifting um like our gear position sensor and how you map it exaggerated you don't get it this length and easy the first gear is one volt second gear is two volt you know at one and a half volts you're in the middle of two gears correct 1.5 volt, you're halfway into the next gear. Power hasn't been applied. applied yet, and all that stuff. So that's where the sequentials become more foolproof, yep. so to speak. Yeah. Because if you've got a good mapper, a trainer like yep. yourself, yep. who understands how they work, you can make them so they don't clash. Yep. Like the guys in the states, like uh, Calvo with all the Vipers, you never have an issue. Never have an issue with dog wear. Yep. Like sometimes some other issues from his customers, but yep. yeah, <laughs> it's just pretty natural. But you're talking three, 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 three and a half thousand horsepower yeah. cars. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. And like nine litre stroke V10s. Yeah. You know, it's just stuff we're not used to. Oh, it's massive it's engine. Yes. Yeah. It's how big of the Lambo? 5.2. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and even that's like, like we've got all wheel drive. Yeah, you've got a few other things. So, but, yeah. no, he does pretty good over there. He definitely keeps yeah. those Lambo boys on us. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, so that's, that's a quick introduction of dog versus synchro. synchro. Yeah, if you ask me, I'd have dog forever. I'd never yeah. go back to a synchro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Unless it's dual clutch. Unless it's dual clutch, then that's different. <laughs> that's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually mm -hmm. used to do the tooth pointing on the R35 synchros in this mill. So that was before we had the four axis machine. So you know the old dividing heads on the mills? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Divide, yeah. So it literally had two going at once. We had three of these mills. Two would be going at once at pointing. Mm -hmm. And as an apprentice, my job was to go in, press start on one machine. It would come point one side of one tooth, the other side of the other tooth. Index it to the next tooth. Yes. Go to the other mill. Press start. And I was literally spent all day jumping between. between. And they're programmed for thirty seconds because it just yeah. goes down, mur, mur, back up, and oh, then you had to oh, index oh. it. <laughs> and like, man, when you're talking Crazy. hundreds at a time, I mean, I spent all week doing that one time. <laughs> yeah. You know, so so when I saw him start getting four axis machines and some of the new stuff that's come off since I've been in the office, yeah. I'm, Jealous. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. I'll, I'll, I'll go back like, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go hop out. Yeah, I'm like, don't right. you complain yeah. about that. Yeah. So, yeah, so, which is awesome, you know, about it yeah. all. But yeah, that gives you an idea of dog profile getting put on. So, that's one that has been dogged and one that hasn't. Yep, so these yeah. being the dog teeth. Yeah, and that's, yeah, the blank. And we now actually are seeing CD burr the parts after gear cutting. So, you see the edging. Yeah. We used to actually do it all by hand. By hand, yeah. Yeah, yeah, hand scraping. Yeah. But yeah, now we yeah, we put in yeah, do CNC deburring. So not Makes on sense. every part, but where we can do it. Where um, you can get in there and get the cutter into it yeah. and doing it. So yeah, so one of the old girls retired purely to do deburring. This is when we got four axes put in. This was like This is the bomb. This was the game changer. They're setting up now. They're actually um on our trimming sequentials they've got a little push rod. So they're milling the yeah, the flat and pulling the hole in for the clevis to go in. So, so that's made just a simple part is yeah. And still made here. Yeah, there's any other large manufacturer would be setting that they, out. They sub that out to yeah. get it done. Yeah, no, like no. and get a, get a hundred done, so I don't have to do it again for yeah, how many and, months. And then they think of that because they go, oh, it's just a small alley part that doesn't do much. Where we don't think like that. We like to have control, control over, over it as and, much as possible. Yeah, and like you know, and the tolerancing on that part's tight. It doesn't need to be, but we just like, and then that way you know when the guy gets it the next time. It's like buying a bottle of Coke; it doesn't taste different each no, time. You know, that's exactly. what we try and go for. Is like, yeah. yeah. You shouldn't be able to tell the difference between them. That's how I'll end up. And even though it's just like a clevis, he'll still clock it in to make sure it runs true before it gets milled. Chuck's probably good enough just to do it each time, but they'll still clock it in, yeah. make sure it's true, parallel. Yeah. It's that attention to detail. It's those small things that add up on your product that really set you apart from from the rest and yeah. you know why, why the price is there because it's quality. I guess you're just checking to see if it's running true because yeah, the way it's set in up a and done jaw, like it, it and a collar it can't, really, it can't really move that much. Yeah. No. Yeah. But, Oh, wait, but it's about making sure. Oh, you know, you might have come back from lunch with greasy KFC fingers and put it in crooked, you know, <laughs> just to make sure you don't, you know, yep. Yep. Uh, do all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, and again, there's another like plate fixture for uh, jobbing when jobs come through. So, it's, yeah. Yeah. And we'll try and um, multi use plates. So, yep. that way, once it's set up and clocked in, you don't have to keep Yeah, they it. should do a few different <laughs> jobs. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so no, it's, it's really good. Like, really exciting, so. But I'll show you some of these, so some two new legs that we got. So these are to help, we're mainly doing shafts and stuff like that, yep. and longer jobs. And then we actually use this one here for CBN turning. So uh, instead of grinding, this legs, we put a lot, you know, bought the right one, uh, invested in it. So this can like hold size, like yep. this will hold exact size all day, every day. Yep. And it's got a self-measuring system and self-measuring probe. So if you say, I want that bore to come out 30, it'll measure it and it'll go, oh, I'm at 29.98, rerun a cut, measure it. 
I'm at 30. Yep. It sounds the green alarm to take the part out. So, wow. yeah, so, so obviously like then- closed loop, size yeah, control. Basically, yeah. and then because um, you're doing it on a lathe instead of a grinding stone, you can knock through the stuff a bit quicker. So yeah. some stuff you can do in here, uh, some stuff we still do with the proper grinder because yeah. you want the finish or you're going through a hole and you want the parallelism. Yeah, so, sure. Yeah, so you can see we actually got GR6 in there getting done now. Right. Like so input, output shaft or something? Yeah, that, that second output, yep. or second input shaft we call it. Yep. Um, so that's it getting done externally between centers, so it's nice and true. So a lot of the stuff, all the shafts we do, everything's done between centers. centers. Yeah, yep. so I mean, now that they weigh the turn them and the machines we got, you don't have to, we used to recenter yeah, straighten. Yep. So they come out of the machine bent and distorted. Yeah. Um, and that was my job as an apprentice is on the press. Straighten and you're straightening. Yeah. Wow. All within O2. Yeah. So <laughs> you're just like literally, like my first job here was a pallet of 50 helical cut super input shafts and then a pallet of 50 straight cut input shafts. And yeah. this is how you do it. <laughs> when you've done this, come see us. And I thought it was only going to take a few hours, yeah. not a few days. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first like, hey, welcome to PPG. We'll get you this, yeah. this guy will show you how to do this. Was it all press or did you use hammer as well? And no, nah, press, all in the press. So you'd have a gauge and then you'd sometimes you'd set up like a clock under it. Yes. So you go, oh, I've moved it, I've bent the this shaft much, half a mil. It, that equals should, point should equal. Yeah. 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 And then the worst was if um, you had the higher spots opposite each other, you then had chasing. to like bend it yeah, right. okay. to have one high spot. Because if you go like that, you're constantly chasing yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah. don't straighten over circlet grooves or oil holes. <laughs> yeah. Probably, oh, I had yeah. done a couple, <laughs> yeah. done a couple yeah. snapped Crack. ones. Yeah. 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 No, like snaps. Snap like, because sometimes when you're straightening, especially after heat treatment, they might take eight tonne to move. Yeah. So all of a sudden, they just go on you. But it's amazing what you can bend them to. Like when we did do axles, sometimes they'd come back like two mil out of rounds. Wow. Like two mil distorted. Yeah, yeah. And I'm talking like you'd have a block of banana and nothing happened. And you're like, this is not going to come good. No, yeah. eventually you get there. Yeah. But yeah. Like, yeah. Sometimes like we had to one stage actually take some shafts to another shop yeah. to use a bigger press. Yeah. <laughs> like it was, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, the DO800 stuff, because it's hollow, yep. that makes it so hard because you've got the heat treatment from both sides. From both sides, that's right. Yeah, yeah, they don't. You've got to be extra careful with it. Yeah. Normally when they're solid, they're soft in the middle because the right. heat treatment doesn't go all the way through. Yeah, they're not as brittle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you can through harden, but yeah, we don't, not on gears and stuff. So this is sort of our like, yeah, in progress mismatch kind of rack. Yeah. So you can kind of see, this is where some of the parts have been CBN instead of ground. So you can kind of see the surface finish on them. And yeah, they go through. It's actually very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. Mm -hmm. And like the way that they're tooled up and do it, so that back face, the bore, and this face is all done in one tool, one pass, one operation. Yeah, so there's it's no, all true to each other. Yeah. And, every, and our tolerance of clocking stuff in is O2. So, yeah. you know, a piece of paper is O5 normally. 50th of a millimetre. Yeah. It's just normal. So we try and stick to that, just for that same very reason, that consistency and quality. These are Evo 3 input shafts. Yeah, okay. So these are straight out the lathe. So that bigger lathe on the left allows you to spin the shaft around yep. and do it all in one sort of one operation, so to speak. So you put the billet in and take it out like that. Yep. Um, so they will double check that for like between centers for straightness and that, but that new lathe, they come out bang on. So that'll be the, the yeah, spine input, for input the, spine. the clutch drive. Yeah, and then first gear, reverse, reverse. second, yep. and they'll put some splines on the back of it for hubs to go onto. Yep. Um, oil hole up the middle. We always take the threads because this material is like, in terms of metal, like yep. butter when yep. it's soft. Yep. Like obviously not that extreme, but you look at it and it wants the dent. Yeah. So we so just, yeah, just yeah, like it. It, protect it. But I've unfortunately banged from let threads before. And uh, yeah, you you some you whole, you're you're whole, yeah, pushing a trolley. Yeah. yeah. Like letting them just jingle into each other. Yeah, yeah just ruin it. So yeah, yeah, so it's all those things that we just make sure. But yeah. that is the de burring mill now. So that's what, what it got turned into. So just a real simple, efficient thing. Yeah. The apprentices are very happy with it, with that set up. Um, like I said, we still do stuff by hand where we have to. Yeah. Um, but yeah. That so looks like it's for straightening. That is the straightening, yeah. <laughs> so, and then they normally wheel the table over, but that's the center, like, check it between oh, centers. Yeah, yeah. They normally wheel it over. But I should actually show you these. These are the old girls. There's nothing wrong with them in terms of, like, so holding size and machining. They're just the old girls before that everything went yeah. CNC, so. Yeah, so is that cutting that spline? Yeah, so this is cutting that spline. That's our new inline box that we're doing. Right, so yeah, so oh, th these are all mechanical. It's set up with a gear train out the back and it's on like a cam circular motion. So it comes down, backs off, out and around. Yeah. So that basically cuts up and down yeah. to, to yeah. create that it spline and goes in. Yeah. 
and, and then it feeds it itself in bit by yeah. bit each time. This is, I guess, what we, me and you would probably call real machining, so yeah, to speak. Cool, like, yeah. you got to get in the back, change the gear train. So right. you got to work out. I've got speeds yeah, and yeah, I got like a 52 speeds cutter. And feeds. I want 27 teeth on the shaft. I've never done so many more fractions in my life than gear yeah. cutting. Yeah. It's funny, it's cool, I'll never use a fraction, and then you're like, oh, 27, 52, and you're like, yeah. oh, man. But when they go, yeah, you know about them. Yeah. So when I first started, it was like, we had like eight of these. Right. And when you got them all going, dude, it was like an earthquake. Yeah. Because like they, yeah, right. they just thump, like they just thump, thump, thump. And they literally just yeah. punch that shape out. And then this is the CNC version of it. So this was meant to have like a robot feeder. Yeah. Like you're meant to be able to push a, a table in full of parts and then load it and then you just pull the trolley out but it we're not more problem than what it was oh, worth I, yeah they're more set up for doing like thousands of the same thing oh, exactly. we're like yeah so this will um so this is the cnc version of those so i wonder how long those last so these must be all custom tools so when that yeah. gets going to suit their, like, um, yeah the cutter just looks like it's going profiles. above and below the job which i'm sure they try and mimic the same profile on a lot of the shit so they don't have to do so. mm. are all these tools custom for you guys yeah based so, on your profile that you want to achieve. Yeah, so I guess the easiest way I can put it is like there is off the shelf tooth profiles, like a thread, you can have like M12 by one, 1.5. If, you know, we just draw something and we go, we need it to be like M12.8 by 1.3 pitch, yeah. we'll then get that ordered in. So there's no compromise on the profile to go, oh, I've just got to suit what I can get. Do you get. try and use the same profiles across the board to? We try to, but yeah. we also Sometimes try don't. We don't let, uh, how yeah, do I say? Quality be we, yeah, quality yeah, compromised. By, by what we've yeah, got available for us to use. But if it will work, then of course you yeah. can do it. Yeah, yeah okay, there's those small tweaks that you go, I might just change the module just a slight bit to instead of buying a new tool, and it's still going to be fine. Yeah. Whereas other times you go, no, nah, I need that. And so those it. cut these longer blocks. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so these little ones here, they'll do the splines. So yeah, and these big ones do the gears. Yeah, so that's the gear job. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then we got all different size ones and then you know, yeah, the real big ones. Oh, yeah. It's the same thing, and it's all um, we get it from the UK. Yeah, right. like where they they're just good at tooling. You know, how so. often do you have to replace them when they wear? Uh, out? Every few years. Wow. So when yeah. to resharpen them, you might only take off like 05.1. Yeah. We yeah. got our own sharpener there that the QA guy does. So then that way, it's all certified. And, and then we insane. actually got some carbide ones. So if you feel the weight of that, well, wow. and then feel the weight of that, like that's heavier than that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's solid carbide. That's that's wow. expensive. Yeah, that's probably like six grand. Yeah. Oh. So don't drop it. No, 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 no. Six thousand dollars. <laughs> so yeah, so it's just big, big difference. So, mm. so that's the same with the tooling and stuff. We just don't yeah. cut corners on it. You yeah. can't, you know. So yeah, because this is where the main gear profile takes shape, where things actually yeah start looking like gears. Yeah. So they'll come into this area kind of like as the blanks like that. So that's, yeah, all turns, um, I mean, different gears, but yeah, then they get the teeth put on. So from here, this one will get deburred. So they'll go on the machine, take the burr away. Then it'll go to milling, get the dogs put on, paint treatment, back, ground. There's a lot. Laser engraved, yeah. packed. Everything's QA'd and checked, everything along the way. So Someone says, hey, can you throw a gear on the machine? Like, we need one. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't work like and that. And it's 500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially when like, so, yeah, our, so we try and produce to like a forecast, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. But more like at the moment, we're sort of six months planned out. So when people ring up, can you slip this in? We're always trying to accommodate, but we're like, oh man, we've got six months like yeah. planned already, so. Um, which you kind of got to be, especially when it's like forever changing climate and stuff. Yeah. Trying to be ahead, so um, we'll come back to him, we'll let him get it all set up um, and running. <laughs> yeah, so then That's sort of nice. coming back down toward the, yeah, this is where, this is our pre and post heat treatment yeah, area. Yeah, so there's, yeah, so they're the ones in the lay, so yeah, they've come back. Important. This is our sort of like, yeah, finished area, and then we're coming to like, yeah, this is where stuff comes back from heat treatment. From here it gets sorted yep. um, for the next process. Um, we kind of got our grinding area in there. So that's where stuff comes back hard and gets all its finishing done. Yep. Yeah, we'll go in there, we'll have yeah. a look. Yeah, yeah, we'll go see Steve. Okay. So Steve, how long have you been here, Steve? 20 years? 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. Yeah. So Steve's our grinder. Yeah. Um, Has he always been the grinder? Yeah. Well, he does gear cutting as well. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, 18 years, he would have done everything, surely. Yeah, he's, a, he's I think, more, more formal gear cutting than anything. I actually did a fair bit of my apprenticeship with Steve. Yeah. 
And that was the last thing I was doing was learning grinding from him before I moved into the office. So, yeah. so yeah, so at the moment he's yeah setting up grinding shafts. So this is where he's setting up for the backside, but you can kind of see the surface finish difference where he has and hasn't ground. Yeah. So these are all, so that's to, all to suit bearing journals. Yeah. Um, get lengths right on shoulders. Yeah. To get the stack up right. We still got to set the end float and preloads. Yes. At least we do that to make sure our gears stack up like they should. So yeah. it just removes one less thing for people to worry about when they build. So yeah, so GDR sequential. This is our, our final preserving and packing area. Oh yeah, so, yes. Oh, so everything will come through here. Yeah, like it, um, it all looks from there. Yeah, hot washed. That's all you do, eh? Yeah, that so looks from there. So this is the final dipping area, so everything will get hot washed to get all the machining cooling off. You go through a special preserving wax. So this wax. is after QC? So this is when they're ready, so after this, they're all no more QC, no more checking. This is now pack so bubble these bag. Get... So they're for stock, they're ones we've right. made for stock. So when we generally make, so then some we make weld ons or something like that. We've got them there You've to got go. There. You're not having a quick, easy part to process like that. So you do them in bulk. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And most things we try and do in big runs. So yeah. you know, you can see with the dog rings here. Yeah. Um, you know, most are sort of like twenty to thirty. Yeah. Sometimes fifty on the big stuff. Because so. they're classic, potentially yeah, as a consumable. Yeah. Fifty-six input chart. Does is that T fifty six input chart? Ah, uh, these I reckon they're GDR. No, yeah, because our T fifty six are two peaks. Ah. Yes. Yeah. So we got a quill shaft and the input gear. So we had to do that from Calvo because he, when they were, we were doing them as one piece, the, the front section needs the torsional load, whereas you need it for the gear. Um, so we had to make them two piece, one half to the, the bit that actually goes into gear to suit that twisting load. Because yeah. the gear material doesn't suit torsional loading and the torsional loading material doesn't suit being a gear. Right. So we literally had to go, well, we'll make them as two pieces to suit. Yeah. So yeah. again, that's that extreme duty yeah. extreme application. Packing area and a yeah. little manual machining area for just the odd jobs, putting oil holes in, recentering shafts. Yeah, and a demagger. So when you actually grind parts, they come out magnetic. Yes, yes. So yeah, so we use the old crack tester to um, demagnetize parts. Demagnetize part. it. Yeah. Yes. It's, that is crazy, like you you can get two parts and you actually feel them, they feel yeah. like two magnets I sticking remember, to each other. I yeah. remember dealing with that years ago. Yeah. I think it was probably a tape. So this is them now coming into the new bit. We'll have a look at some of the DO800 stuff that we've been making for you. So this is basically doubled our size. We're all going to get filled pretty soon. Filled with machines, and you can see where it's all been taped out. Started planning. Yeah. There's yeah. All right. There's magnet boards down there where everything's been cut out to scale. Lucky you came this week and not next week because yeah. next week everything's being moved. Right. So yeah. So next week so it would have been timing, yeah. yeah, very good timing. We'll have a look at some of the DO800 stuff. So this is final drives and everything. And if you know all the parts, so you can make <laughs> you can talk about it. Don't put the pressure on him. So this is a set. This is what goes, this is sort of everything in the DO800. So is that why these are pressed on? Yeah, because so the, they bend and then these are supposed to be extremely hard? Yeah, yeah, so, okay. so yeah, they, they spline on. So I think only that one gear is yeah. cut on the shaft. And then the rest the first. Be, yeah, because yeah. if you made that one removable on the shaft, it would be too weak. Yeah, so to speak, gotcha. Would, because yeah. of how small it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ironically enough, we said that we don't do the staking, but we oh, tried gosh. it mm. on these purely because of the oh. we couldn't get a well design that we were happy with. Yep. So on that one, we have actually done that because it would have been worse to weld it than to do that. Yep. So that's, that's the first time I've seen in like seventh gear, so it doesn't get cop. Yeah, no, then that's the other much. thing. Doesn't doesn't cop too much. If you're going to run us through all the parts, haha. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is the DL800 gear set mm -hmm. for the Audi R8 and the Huracan. That's right. Yeah. Um, with the optional ring and pinning for the rear diff. Yep. Two different ratios, one's Audi R8 and one's the Huracan. Also note there's two different ratios for front input gears for Audi R8 to Huracan. Yep, that's the front transfer gears, right? Yep, so yep. that's the input and that's the output for it. Yep. And they that output gear goes on that, so that connects to the front shaft, that goes to the front diff. Right, so this is just the front wheel drive output shaft. That's right. Um, so essentially an, an all-wheel drive car has that coming out of the transmission. That's right. And yeah. a two-wheel drive car doesn't have that, just has a blanking cup in the front of the case. Literally all the bearing carriers are there, everything's ready to go, it's all just yeah. blanked off. So if you're going to convert two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, which we've done, yep, it comes with the parts to do that. That's correct. You just need a couple of bearings and some clips. That's right. Yeah. And a different seal? No, it's all the same. Same seal. All the yeah, same. Right. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, right. Depending whether it's Audi R8 or Huracan, yep. it's either one of those two pairs. Correct. And then run us through, I guess, disregard the ring and pinion here, but mm -hmm. run us through the other parts that, that are included in the gear set. So you come with two output shafts that connect even gears. Yep. So those are evens. Um, you've got the second input shaft here. 
first input shaft, which has first, third, and fifth. Um, that's fr front transfer yep. output shaft. Got the big guy here, first gear. Yep. And this is a output gear that really sends all the drive to the ring and pinion. Yep. So that's like the drop gear? The drop or, gear. Or rear reduction gear. Yep. yep. Then you've got... So all of the... All the drive ends up going through this that's right. big boy here. Yeah. Then you've got seventh and sixth. That is fifth gear, fourth gear. Got second gear there. That is reverse. Yeah. And that is third. Yeah. And that is seventh gear output, which runs along that one. Tom. Yeah. He's done it right. He's done it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, He's put on, a yeah. couple of these together. I was going to yeah. say, he must have done one or two. Yeah. <laughs> Is it the shape? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's worth noting, coming back to this, uh, the dog ring. Design, uh, yeah. yeah. the design and how it's, uh, I guess, fixed to the gear itself. Yeah, so um, I think this one might show it better on the back. You can see that weld diameter. Mm. So you see how far out the weld, the two pieces are yep. to each other. And then you think where that weld's gone. It's so allows, so like we were talking about before, you look at the gap between that inner pocket and there. If you were to try and do that staking, you would just break them. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, from the start, we were like, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go to weld, but some of the other ones um, we had to because we couldn't get the right design to suit welding them properly. Yeah. We wouldn't have had enough penetration. So yeah. um, we went with that way. So. Yeah, so the only ones that have been pressed on in this First and seventh gear set. Yeah. Seventh and sixth. Seventh, seventh and sixth. sixth. And you can see the difference in design. It's splined. So that that yeah. those do that dog ring is splined on. And you can see the pockets well and truly away from it. Yeah. yeah. And then this one has no pockets to worry about. So you don't have so, to worry about it solid. Yeah. yeah. So you're not yeah. gonna have an issue at all. Yeah, so yeah, so it was an educated decision to go that way on them. Every gear and design has been thought about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And just yeah. Pads are going to stack, try and make them user friendly for the end user um, because yeah. obviously a lot of our stuff goes out in kit form. Yeah. So we've got to think about the guys building them. And it's, uh, it's worth mentioning that to our knowledge, any other gear set on the market doesn't come with input shaft, output shaft. This comes with both input shafts, both output shafts, front drive, output shaft, front drive transfer gears. Yep. So make going from two wheel drive to all wheel drive, yep. now you can do it. You don't have to kill for another or buy another all wheel drive transmission and use all the parts out of it. So that's handy as. Yeah. And gear ground. Gear ground as well. Yeah. yeah. I already know what that's for, but can you give us a technical. So yeah, the gear, the gear grinding just, it just gives you that exact profile. Yep. So um, then that way, you know, when it runs on the other two, any small distortion or anything like that to move from heat treatment, you've then got two perfectly matched things running on each other. Yep. So you get full contact, full surface area, so you get extra strength that way. Plus also the surface finish you get from the gear, from the grinding itself, is like a, like a polishing lapping kind of finish. So it's smoother against, and it allows you to run big fat coarse tooth profiles and pitches and keep, the, keep it relatively quiet. Yep. Um, still keep it that OEM spec. To so the end that. user, all they know is that it's quite, yeah. in comparison to a noise. Yeah, that, that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah, stronger and quieter, it yeah. makes it, just helps with that longevity, and especially when you're talking the Lamborghinis and high end, yeah. you, you want that. You don't want the, um, the aftermarket no, gear set. No, you don't, yeah. no, no, otherwise Sound. we would have done straight cut and everything like that. Yeah. You know, we just would have prioritized yeah. strength that way first. So this is sure. a combination of, okay, we're gonna gear grind it, we can do this, we can't have too big a tooth, we can't, so all those things were taken into account from the start. Sure. Not an afterthought, so. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't been released yet, but the ring and pinions, we've, we've already got them in R&D, like testing and whatnot, haven't we, Joe? Yep. So there, the same ratio was factory, yep. different tooth count. Different tooth count. So yep. yeah, it's a shame I don't have a standard one here to show you, but you can see the size of the teeth on the, yep. are quite larger what, than the factory one. Is there like a percentage that you know off? Oh, I think it's about like 25 percent, 30 percent, yeah, larger tooth. So. Yep. Yeah, we dropped quite a few out of them to yep. keep the ratio the same, so. And I mean, we've put 1800 through stock, stock yeah. without any issues. That's not Might drag slip drag with slicks yeah. and stuff. We've still been drag strip with yeah. radials. Mm. But yeah, I guess this is um, the option for the big boys or, I mean, the biggest thing is that if you're gonna build it, do it properly. 100%. Because to get to the ring and pinion, the gear set's fully apart. Oh, apart. The whole train. Yeah. So if, and if you know how many days it takes to put these things apart, pull them apart, strip them, and put them back together. Don't yeah. make me do it twice, please. Don't make you do it twice. Yeah. <laughs> so spend the extra money on the ring and pinion if you think that you're gonna go big boy power or drag race and whatnot. And like um, all things, once you start beefing up other things, it just show the next week the thing next goes. So between all that stuff. So it's worth noting, Tom, how, like, this is the final product, but when we first come to you and, and give you a project, what, what, 
what um, thought processes are there before you can go into development and um, I guess designing gears and tooth profiles and all that kind of stuff? Like, what are you thinking? So the first thing we do is work out what, what are the problems? What are the inherent problems of the transmission from the start? Because generally people come to you because it's having a problem. Yep. yep. So first things first is to fix the problem that they're having, whatever it may be, breaking a clip or second gear always fails or something like that. So first things first is to fix the problem, then to look at what can and can't be done to make it easier to build or not build, like going to slide fits instead of press fits yep. or putting a circlip here to avoid that or you know changing a bearing from tapered to cylindrical so you don't have to preload it. Sure. All those sorts of things. Uh, then we look at what power and RPM because yep. uh, some bearings only uh, you get limited by RPM. Yep. So you have to make sure that the bearings are all RPM suited. Sure. And then you also have to take into account what they're going to do down the track with it. So you might come to me, oh, we've got 1,500 horsepower cars. Yep. Then you sort of go, well, it's a Lamborghini with a big V10 in it. They're going to go up higher. So we go, maybe we'll expect 3,000 horsepower at the market. So we'll work off four. Yeah. So we'll work back from four. You know, we always try and build that buffer in. Yeah. It's like turbo technology. Each yeah. year or every six months, it feels like computers. Every six yeah. months, there's a new turbo that's smaller and more powerful. So yeah. Yeah. we've got to try and take that into consideration because the, to develop a gear set to take that power is a lot longer. So yeah. we try and make sure that we, we put enough in the bank for future development. Sure. And try and make it so that people only have to spend the money once. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's probably the big thing is you know, like people go, oh, this is cheaper, that is cheaper, but you'll buy that four times over. Yeah. And you'll have four times the labor, four times the hassle, and four times the dealing with the shop and this and all the other crap that goes with it. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's worth um, noting when you say, try and make it so the customer only has to buy it once. I mean, at that level, everything's somewhat- Consumable. Got a, a consumable and yeah. it has a use by date. Um, let's go look at V8 supercars where they make say 800 horsepower yeah and how often they need to be stripped down checked. And checked yeah yeah like probably every every race they're probably checked yeah. they would go through crack testing and fatigue checking and stuff like that so you know like formula one's another example before they brought in a lot of the new rules but you know they were like they had qualifying engines qualifying gearboxes that budget that's the reality, of that's the reality. like yeah. and that, it's unfortunate what people need to understand is like you know like the honda market example those cars came out with 150 horsepower <laughs> So you start making a thousand horsepower in them, yeah. you're in a car that was never ever designed for that kind of stuff. So yeah. a lot of people kind of forget the humbleness of the car they're building. Or like a Sylvia, the thing's now like 25 years old. Yeah. So it's got a 25 year old chassis in it, other things. So when people start doing it, they need to understand that, yeah. yeah. You start playing with things, you gotta start thinking of some stuff. Oh, at high power, you gotta start thinking of certain things like tires and brakes and fluid changes. Like, you know, some of the guys in the States, like the Cowboy with the Viper, every 1500 miles and the 3000 horsepower cars yeah. is like kind of health check yeah that's everything though yeah. like and when you say health check like box out stripped crack tested bearings engine. inspected engine done bottom end checked yeah. everything like that because you're just pushing every mile yeah <laughs> you're just pushing them that hard and then that yeah. way because also it might sound overkill and expensive but you do preventative maintenance you think of the labor you pull your box out you find the bearings yeah. on its last legs you change that $80 bearing now and some labor, that bearing let's go, it has potential to wipe out your box. Uh, thousands and thousands. And if then if that's bad enough, you could see something, you could lock up your engine. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know, that couple grand in maintenance and an $80 bearing can save you 15 grand down the track. Yeah. And, yeah. and setting the expectation from the start, right? Yeah. 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 So they know the, the ongoing maintenance costs. Yeah, yeah, I love when they say, oh, but I'm only doing roll racing. Yeah. Hold on, you just went and done six laps straight after the other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they don't take into account the heat soak <laughs> yeah. and yeah. the breakdown. Like we had a... Six laps. Six, 12 uh, laps. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you're in the finals of roll racing, it's six. And then yeah. not to mention the six that you do prior to that, just yeah. to test if yeah. everything's all right. Yeah, they've done yeah. 15, And the laps. testing on the way to the track. Yeah. 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 And probably at some, home, on the way home yeah. from the track. Yeah, 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 exactly right. And people, you know, sometimes people get the old whoopsie they had. You know, you might do something now that bites you back in a week's yeah, time, yeah. like, you know, I had some people there, oh no, I did a one, two, one and shifted the drags, but oh, it was fine. Oh, but yeah, then a week later, rain pull shaft snapped. Yeah. You go, know, I think it happened back there, yeah. mate, but it just held on. No, yeah. no, no, I was just driving to church on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe how many church customers I had. Yeah, 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 yeah like, oh yeah, you know. It's just crazy, yeah. The amount of race cars. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. amount of people that break them on the way to church on a Sunday yeah. morning is just out of control. Or, you know, picking up their grandma for Maybe the Maybe like running late to church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had one guy and yeah, it was just like, it wasn't our box, he thought it was, but yeah, he literally spat the gear out the side. And he's like, oh, I was just downshifting at the traffic lights. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, from fourth to first. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 you've done something, so yeah. yeah. Just funny, yeah. When you, when you mentioned horsepower, 
<laughs> is this all just knowledge where you're like, okay, we're going to make it suitable for 3,000, 4,000 horsepower? Yeah. How do you get, like, is that computer aided? Computer aided, like uh, more computer verified, yeah. if that makes sense. So we've got, so now we run a lot of stuff in FEA yeah. and things like that. But a lot of it comes back to that um, understanding how the tooth actually works yeah. and transfers load through itself compared to helix angles and the tooth profile. So it's not just as simple as like, yeah, put, put a big tooth in it and happy days. You yeah. can go too big and too coarse yeah. and make it weak that way. So you've got to find that balance. But a lot of it comes from experience. experience and unfortunately, yeah. Some things have been learned the hard way. Like sure. I think anyone with no, a business. I think it's the only way to learn, yeah. And this yeah. industry, you know, it's. Um, I don't think anyone's gone through any sort of yeah. destructive no, you learning. You, you know, yeah. that's. Um, and same thing, you can have the best. And what pe some people don't realize is you can have the best stuff in the world built wrong, driven wrong. You'll, like, I could kill you a Tremec sequential with a 100 horsepower car. Yes that other people can't kill with tooth out. Only because yeah. I know how it works and what not to do. Sure. So a lot of people need to understand that. You can have like a Formula One engine. Yeah. That thing will still break and blow up on you. Yeah. Like yeah. it doesn't matter how. Well, long. it does, we see it on TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even no, with it's the like a sensor fault. We watched the Formula One the other day and they had a transmission sensor fault. Yeah. It's like, well, uh, <laughs> we, we get customers like, yeah, yeah but, but we just put that sensor in. Yeah. It was 300 bucks. And yeah. it's like, hang on, these guys got multi-million dollar budgets and it happens. Yeah. But sometimes physics. Yeah. It's just well, we we were using we use the F1 gear position sensor, and same thing. Sometimes you just, that just craps itself, and you just go to the supplier and they're like, oh, "That's just the nature of the game." Yeah. So you like so even uh, from the supplier themselves, they just yeah. go, "Mate, that's just what happens in racing applications." Yeah. 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 That, that extreme load, extreme heat, vibration, vibration, loading. You're not just cruising up and down in the street. You're like, so that's something I when you hit a ripple strip or a bump at 180 or 200 k's yeah. an hour on a straight. Oh, it's yeah. a lot different than hitting it at 40. Yeah. yeah. Or 50, you know, yeah. so and that's probably something I guess some people just forget that is that extra loading and, and force on everything. So, yeah. oh, look at what the cars do when they're making close to 2000 horsepower on road surface that's not even that grippy. Oh, yeah, the things are hopping, yeah. Yeah. it's crazy what driveline load ridiculous. Yeah, cop. So, there's a total of three boxes per gear set. We've got a bunch here. On a pallet, ready to go. In stock, ready to go. In stock. <laughs> ready for Anthony to assemble. <laughs> nah, put your orders in, mate. Yeah, 100%. You, you gotta you can support online. Australia. Check it out. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, um... That's all. Well, thanks for coming down, guys. We don't get too many people coming down too often, so it's actually yeah. nice to yeah, yeah. Show, it, show yeah. off the facility. And... Yeah, it was good to see it, especially if something we don't see every day. Yeah. Um, and I've never seen, so. It's great to see that even the smallest of parts, aluminium, that most people just get China to do. Mm -hmm. and yeah. you get 50 done for 50 bucks. Uh, yeah. Still done here in a machine that was probably doing a, a higher profile part. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially yeah, when you open such a professional box, you don't picture homegrown local company. Everything done yeah. Yeah. In, a, in South Australia. Yeah. 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 And like um, a lot of, like, you know, some of the long-term staff, like the owner's brother works here, his yeah. sister works here. Yeah. So yeah, so it's like real family. Like, yeah, it's good. But we love to support people that support us and that are close and, 100%. and that's um it's just made it even better again. It's like after coming here. Even though we sort of were very close really? anyway. Yeah, yeah, but um, it just re reiterates what yeah. we're all about. Yeah. You know, and we're on that same page with each other. Yeah. So yeah, it's not. I think if um, a lot of the Americans and Europeans and whatever your class is your biggest clients yeah. were to come over and see everything done here, it would change their view. On, yeah, yeah. on buying gears. Yeah, and stop, yeah, like, like comparing you to, you're not comparing apples with apples sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. a nice to actually show. Yeah. We have our reputation sure. for a reason, not yeah. all smoke and mirrors. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, right, for, thanks right. for your time. Thanks. thanks for the run around the shop. No, yeah. no, anytime, guys. It's, uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll see you around whenever you're up in um, Sydney. Yeah, feel free to time attack, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 100%. That's the plan. Cool, cool. Oh, cool.